for Inside Utah Politics. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Glenn Mills. It is time to go Inside Utah Politics. We do begin this morning with a preview of the special election convention for the Democratic delegates in the 2nd Congressional District. Oscar Mata is the vice chair of the Utah Democratic Party here to get us uh, up to speed on that. Oscar, great to have you on the show. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for, uh, for having me. Uh, coming up in just a couple of days, uh, three days away. So tell us uh, what, give, give us all the details as to where and when the convention will be. Yes, so with it being a, a Democrat convention, we uh, believe in uh, technology and making it as easy as possible for folks to participate. So our special state convention will be held uh, virtually and will include uh, speeches from the candidates and then we will send out the ballots via email and our Congressional District 2 candidates will vote and we'll make our announcement uh, later in the day. So pretty. Uh, fast and simple because we know uh, delegates are out traveling and enjoying time with their families. Yeah, and, and delegates weren't necessarily expecting to be participating in this step. It just came up and you as a party and the Republican Party really had to respond quickly to this. What was that like working around it? Yeah, you know, there was a lot of confusion, especially with uh, the dates, right? We uh, later found out that there would be uh, dates shifting for the primary and uh, the general this year. So a lot of scrambling, but I think we're going to pull it all together and put on a great uh, convention for our delegates. Uh, did you mention the time on Wednesday for that convention? So it'll be in the evening uh, at 6. Okay. Uh, and you will be able to log in. Uh, on our state party website. Mm -hmm. We'll have the link for uh, folks to attend and okay. participate. Uh, your last convention, uh, which you were a candidate for yes. your, your current seat, you held that in Cedar City and you had a virtual option as well. Yeah. Um, but this one, very important to know, it's just virtual. You're just gonna do it from the comfort of your home, basically. Yep, just virtual and mostly because of what you just mentioned, the urgency and the mm -hmm. uh, short notice. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of the timeline state leaders came up with as far as tying it to the municipal? Uh, obviously, we're gonna have to bump those dates for the municipal a little bit, uh, but do you think they made the right decision in coming up with that schedule? Uh, you know, it's definitely a hard situation they were in, uh, you know, being a, a candidate myself uh, for uh, city office, uh, it, it is a, a huge shift and a huge task for our municipal candidates, especially the dates they selected, the day after Labor Day weekend and the Tuesday before uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, the big question is, are voters gonna be around? Are they gonna mm -hmm. be focused on uh, their local elections? Because as you know, turnout's already uh, lower. Yeah, yeah, no doubt years. about that. In, in fact, I'm kind of interested to see, could this potentially increase turnout for a municipal? And what impact could it have on the Democratic candidate as well? Because the Salt Lake mayoral candidates, uh, even though it's a partisan race, you know, it's no secret, they are members of the Democratic Party. Yeah. So could that potentially sway the race at all, I wonder? Well, I, I think what we've seen is that special elections are uh, able to, to increase turnout. And like you mentioned, we have a very uh, big mayoral race in our, uh, in our capital city that votes uh, very heavily Democratic. And so if we can get uh, the turnout up, I think we're gonna have uh, a, real, uh, a real race to watch in CD2. Okay, let's first talk about the candidates up for the Democratic nomination on Wednesday. There are three of them. Yes. Tell us who they are. Uh, so we have uh, Senator, Senator Kathleen Reby, mm -hmm. uh, Guy Warner, who's uh, been involved in the party, uh, party organizations, and uh, Archie Williams, who is a member of the Utah County Democratic Party. Also important to point out with this special election, this isn't a typical convention vote where it could be two candidates going to the primary. This is a winner-take-all situation. Yes, yet the Utah Democratic Party, we are doing a, a ranked choice, so we will have a nominee uh, this Wednesday. Okay, because did any of the three declare for signatures? Nope. Okay, nope, so you, none of them declared okay, for signatures. Okay, so the nominee will be named this week. Yes. Okay, let's talk about the nature and the dynamic of the seat. A yeah. Republican holds it now. It's still, even though it was the closest congressional race in 2022, it was still a a landslide victory for Chris Stewart. So there are some challenges when you take a look at being competitive in that district. What strategies do you see the candidate being able to implement to try to gain some ground in that district? Uh, 
it, it is uh, a task for Utah Democrats. The Republicans did a great job uh, carving up the districts uh, to make it uh, as conservative as it is. Uh, however, if you've looked at special elections across the country, Democrats are making inroads. We are also, um, I, I believe our county parties are organized and, and ready to uh, go up against uh, whoever the, the Republicans put up. And I think it really comes down to if the Utah Republicans end up having a, a MAGA Republican as their nominee. And how could that potentially change the dynamic, do you think? Well, I think what we've <clears throat> seen, again, is uh, when it comes to Utah voters, um, they're, they're not looking for, for radical partisanship, and uh, they're looking for mainstream elected officials who will uh, help, them in, help them in their day-to-day -day lives. Uh, talk about from a party perspective from the Democrats, what are some of the mainstream principles that you believe could help win over voters in the second district? Well, I think, one, we've got to be promoting uh, the, uh, the infrastructure bill that, uh, that the president uh, and, and the Congress passed with, uh, with bipartisan support. Uh, that's going to be huge in western states like Utah. I think pushing and promoting uh, hard-working Utah families uh, during this uh, summertime where prices are going up and, uh, and prioritizing our, our educators and, and protecting uh, those in, in the education system. Mm -hmm. Uh, obviously, we weren't expecting a few weeks ago, we wouldn't even have known we would be having this conversation right yeah. now, but it does give you an opportunity to put uh, some campaigns and some strategies forward this year as we head into a very important election year next year. So how do you help uh, use this as a foundation or a diving board, so to speak, into next year? Absolutely. Well, I think something that's critical in this race is it includes two of the largest counties, Salt Lake and Davis. So typically the parties see an off year where the volunteers, the donors tend to drop in the off years and then we try to pick them back up in the even years. I think this is going to be a great way to keep that energy flowing heading into uh, 2024. Mm -hmm. And I think, and and uh, you brought it up with us having our state convention in Cedar City, the Utah Democratic Party is committed to uh, putting up strong Democrats in every corner of this state and not taking any county for granted, even uh, the rural counties that tend to be more uh, red. Mm -hmm. And so I think you're going to see with uh, the race this year that we're going to be uh, investing in boots on the ground all across the district, and I hope that leads into how we target in 2024. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about that. We have about a minute left. Uh, Democrats have struggled on a statewide basis. Mm -hmm. In fact, you're one election cycle off of not even nominating a candidate for the Senate. Mm -hmm. So how do you become more irrelevant moving into 2024 on a statewide level? Yeah, you know, I think what we need to be doing as a state party and what we are currently doing is investing in our county parties. Our county parties really took a hit, especially uh, during the pandemic, and to ensure that we have uh, high, uh, high quality candidates. I think that's a, a, a critical component that the Utah Democratic Party uh, needs to ensure that we uh, are focusing on uh, putting up good candidates and making sure that they have the tools and resources to win. All right, Oscar Mata, the vice chair of the Utah Democratic Party. Good luck on Wednesday. Uh, I know it came together quick. Uh, we'll be watching to see what happens. Thanks for being here. Thank you.